Okay, remember back long ago when you were just wee little children in Calculus 1, and you were given something like this. You were asked to integrate it. And you were given a technique to integrate this substitution. We called it substitution, where we would do, we would change variables from x to u. We would say something like, well, let's let x be, or let's let u be x squared plus 1. And then du is equal to 2x dx. And we could then plug in here. So, so notice we've got uh, in place of 2x dx, we just put du. And, 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 and by the way, let's make this like to the fourth power there. Okay, make it a little more interesting. So we got u to the fourth du. Now, also remember, we went from x to u. So, so here, remember, we have x, which has a top limit of integration of 2, bottom limit of 1. And then we had u is x squared plus 1. So u is really 5. You know, for when x is 2, u is 5. So I put a 5 right here. And then when x is uh, 1, u is 2. Yeah, so we have that interval. And notice what we did was we have a transformation here. I transformed, uh, I went from x and y to u. I went from x, I should say, to u. Now, so to be more general, we could say this. We could say, well, if you've got an integral from a to b of f of x, you could do this. You could say, well, let's let x be g of u, okay? And then dx is um, g prime u du. And we could, we could then write the new integral this way. We could write the new integral this way. We could say, well, this is going to be g of a to g of b, and this is f of g of u, and then g prime u du. So notice, we went from dx to g prime u du. And our bounds changed as well. Yeah, our bounds changed. Now, I'm, I want to do a, another example just to kind of illustrate some terminology that I'm going to be using here. Let's suppose I've got an integral from 1 to 2 of x cubed. Now, I'm going to make a transformation here. Okay, I'm going to let u equal x cubed. That's a transformation. Now, I want to do the inverse transformation. I'm going to solve for x. So this is going to be u to the one-third equals x. I call that the inverse transformation. Notice, u equals something in terms of x. I'm calling that the transformation. And then x equals you know, something in terms of u, the inverse transformation. Now, let's... Uh, Let's just differentiate. So this is going to be one-third u to the negative two-thirds du equals dx. Okay. Now, I'm going to uh, set up my integral. Okay. Let me give myself a little room here. Okay. And we won't work it out completely. But notice... In place of, so, so what I've got is I've got u to the one-third cubed, and in place of dx, I've got one-third u to the negative two-thirds du. Okay? Now, remember that, so, so I've changed everything to be in terms of u, but I've got to also change the boundaries. So notice, we, we've got those changes to make. Notice, instead of being in terms of x, I'm in terms of u. And instead of being in terms of dx over here, I've got this thing. Okay. Now, x went from 1 to 2. Well, then u is going to go from 1 to 8. So notice, we made 
that transformation. Here's the transformation. We're going to call this the inverse transformation. So inverse. There's the transformation up top, inverse transformation. But you notice how we can play this game with these integrals. Now, that's with single variable. That's when we were integrating with respect to x. But let's suppose we've got a double integral. And now we're integrating with respect to x and then with respect to y or, you know, y and then res with respect to x. So we're not going to just let u be something. We'll let u be something and v be something. And let's suppose that u is this, x plus 2y, and v is x minus 2y. Let's suppose we have that. Now, what I'm concerning myself with at this point is how do we address the change in bounds? If we do this, if we make a substitution in double integrals, what happens to the bounds? That's what we want to look at. Okay, so let's, let's consider this. Let's, let's see if we can make a transformation. I'm going to look at this u equals x plus 2y. And I'm going to just consider a couple of values for u. I'll let u be 2. Now, if u is 2, okay, if u is 2, then I get 2 equals x plus 2y. And that would be like this line right here. Now, if u is 4, like back like here, I've got 4 equals x plus 2y. And that would be like this line if I, if I sketch the graph of it. Right? We'll just get this line. Okay. Now I could do the same thing with the V's. Okay. V equals 2. And, you know, I get this. V equals 4. I get this. So what we did, I just picked a couple of values for U and a couple of values for V just to look and see what this looks like. Now, if you go, this is on the X, Y axis. Now, what does that look like on the U, V axis? Well, u equals 2 is just this vertical line. u equals 4 is this one. v equals 2 here. v equals 4 is here. So you can see, you know, over here in the xy, we had slanted lines. On the uv, we had vertical and horizontal lines. Okay? Now, let's, uh, so this gives you an idea. This is meant to be kind of an overview. Now, let's suppose that we've got a graph. We've got x squared plus uh, 4y squared equals 1. Now that is, as you know, a, an ellipse. Okay, let me fix this. Okay, okay, so that's an ellipse. Now, let's suppose for this particular graph, we want to do a transformation I'm such that u is equal to x plus 2y and v is equal to x minus, uh, x minus y. Or x minus, let's do this, x minus 2y. Let's do that. Okay? So, now, now here's the deal. This is given to us, okay? We're given u is equal to x plus 2y, v is equal to x minus 2y, and this is our transformation. Okay? Now, I want to graph this x squared plus 4y squared equals 1 just on the xy plane. And then I want to look at that transformed graph on the uv plane. Okay? Now, let's think about this. If x, let's just, we know it's an ellipse. Um, let's suppose that x is 0. Okay? If x is 0, well, what is y? Well, if x is 0, we've got 4y squared equals 1. That means that y squared equals one-fourth. That means that y is equal to plus or minus one-half. Okay, so we'll do plus or minus one-half. Okay, so here's one-half, here's negative one-half. Now, likewise, if y is zero, then x is plus or minus one. So, you know, we get an ellipse that looks something like this. You know, it's not a very good drawing, but there it goes. Now... Let's, let's look at this transformation here. Now, notice up here, I've got the x squared and the, and the y squared. I've got everything in terms of x. Here's what I want to do. I want to do a little trick here. I want to find the inverse transformations. 
Now, I'll, I'll do it this way. I'm going to take u plus v, and let's see what that is. u plus v, well, that's just 2x. If you put these two things together, add the x's, and then the 2y and the negative 2y go away. So what you get here is that x is equal to 1 half u plus v. Yeah, it's just a trick. Now, let's do u minus v. Well, u minus v, this time the x's are going to go away, and we're just going to get 4y, and that means that y is equal to 1 fourth u minus v. See, if I divide. Now, I want to go back and put in, I've got x squared plus 4y squared equals 1. Let me put what x equals in there. So I've got 1 half u plus v squared plus 4, 1 fourth u minus v squared equals 1. Okay? So what I'm doing is I'm transforming. I'm, I'm going from the xy to the, to the uv. So let's see what I get now. I'm going to get 1 fourth times u squared plus 2uv plus v squared, okay, multiplying that out. And then I get 4 times 1 16th uh, u squared minus 2uv, uv plus v squared equals 1, okay? Now, let's see. Let's keep working with it. 1 fourth u squared plus 1 half uv plus 1 fourth v squared, okay? Plus, now, this 4 times 1 16th, that's 1 fourth. So I've got 1 fourth u squared minus 1 half uv plus 1 fourth v squared equals 1. Okay, now let's see what happens here. Uh, this and this will go away. And let's see what we've got then. We've got 1 fourth u squared plus 1 fourth u squared. That's 1 half u squared. We've got 1 fourth v squared plus 1 fourth v squared. That's 1 half v squared equals 1. That means that uh, u squared plus v squared is equal to 2. Yeah, u squared plus v squared is equal to 2. So that gives us a, um, a circle with the radius the square root of 2. So we've, we've just got a circle centered at the origin. Of the, the radius is the square root of 2. Okay, so let me... See if I can draw the square root of 2 here. It's going to be, you know, a little over 1. I'll be sloppy. <laughs> there we go. Okay. So, so we're just, we're, whoops, we're just saying, okay, this, this is the square root of 2. Okay. So we've got u squared plus v squared equals 2. Okay. Now, this brings me to the Jacobian. Now remember, when we did this integral up here, I replaced the dx with this business here. Okay? Okay? In other words, this business here. Okay? Now, let's go down here and see what's going to happen with the double integral. Here we have a double integral, and we're integrating over x and y. Now we want to change that and we're going to integrate, not with the variables x and y, but u and v. So now the x is some function in terms of uv, and the y is some function in terms of uv. And we're going to, instead of having dx dy, we're going to multiply by this thing. Now, okay, so, so I, need to define, I need to define something here. This thing right here, okay, 
is called the Jacobian. Okay. Now you notice I'm using the absolute value of the Jacobian. Okay. But here's what the J Jacobian is. We're going to think of it, we're going to use the determinant uh, type of operation to help us to remember what the Jacobian is. So we're going to have partial x with respect to u, partial x with respect to y, partial y with respect to u, and partial y with respect to, uh, actually, this should be a v here, sorry. Partial y with respect to v, sorry about that. Okay, there's what it is right there. Now, remember how these work. This will be partial x, partial u, partial y, partial v, minus partial x, partial v, minus partial, whoops. Actually, let me, let me put it the way we're used to it. Partial uh, y, partial u, okay, partial Partial y, partial u, partial uh, x, partial v. Okay, so there. This is the Jacobian. Now, we're always going to use the Jacobian, but we're going to find the Jacobian, but use the absolute value of it. Okay. Okay. Now, okay, now let's look at an example. Let's suppose that we have this integral. Okay. And I'm going to go through from start to finish how we would use the Jacobian to evaluate this integral. Let's suppose that I want to make the following substitution. I want to let u equal y minus x. See that y minus x there? That makes sense. And I will let v be at y plus x. Okay, right there. And I want to integrate this over this region. Okay, here's the region. The, uh, this little trapezoid, or, yeah, trapezoid. We've got 0, 1, okay? So here's 0, 1 right there, 0, 2, uh, 2, 0, and 1, 0. In other words, we want to integrate over that region for x and y. But now we're going to leave that x and y business and go to u and v. So we want to end up with an integral in terms of u and v. Now here's, here's you can see right away, this is going to be e to the u divided by v. e to the u over v. You can see that right away. What's, got, what's going to be different is this dx dy, that's going to be replaced with the Jacobian, the absolute value of the Jacobian, du dv or dv du and yeah and and i'm gonna i'm gonna change the bounds so so let's see what we have here now i went ahead and plotted the region on the x y plane i want to see what that looks like on the uv so so let's do this let's look at the points here so here's the points here here's the x y and i'm going to have the point zero one uh zero two 2, 0, and 1, 0, okay? And then I want to get over here and get the u and the v, okay? So now, look, so, so and, and actually, let me, uh, let me break these, let me, let me do the u here and the v here, then we'll have the u, v. So, Let's look at the u. When, when x is 0 and y is 1, what do we got here? We have a 1. Okay? I'm just plugging back into this thing. See? When x is 1, actually, it'd be negative 1, wouldn't it? No, 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 I got it. I got it right. Okay. Now, what about the v? Well, I go over to this one. So when x is uh, 0 and y is 1, we get a 1 here. So look, we get this point. 1, 1. Okay. Now, let's go to 0, 2. So when x is, x is 0 and y is 2, so this is 2. And then this one is also 2, so we've got 2, 2. 
So I'll plot that up there. Now we've got two zeros, so this would be negative two, and this would be two. See, just plugging in. So I've got negative two, two. So negative two, two. There's that. And then finally, the last one, I'm going to put in, I get a negative one here and a one here. So I get negative one, one. So if you look at this new region, here's what we get. Okay. So there's the new, now let's see how this is going to work. I need to find the Jacobian. So now remember the Jacobian, it's going to go like this. It's going to be partial X, partial U, partial X, partial V, right? Partial X, partial U, partial X, partial V. And then down here, partial Y, partial U, partial Y, partial V. Okay. So let's see what this is going to look like. So I need to figure out what X is, and I need to figure out what Y is. Okay, so let's do this. Let, let's let's put, these, put these together. Let's do that trick I did a minute ago. So U plus V, okay? U plus V is equal to, let's see here, U plus V. The X's go away. That's just 2Y. Now that means that Y is equal to 1 half U plus V. Now let's do u minus v, okay? u minus v. Or actually, let's do v minus u. That might work out better, v minus u, okay? So let's do v minus u. Now if we do v minus u, look what we get. We get y minus y, okay? Here we get x minus a negative x. That's going to be 2x. And that means that x is equal to 1 half v minus u. Yeah, that's it. It worked out nicely that way. So we got y is equal to 1 half u plus v, and x is equal to 1 half uh, v minus u. Now let's see if we can calculate the partial x with respect to u. So this would be negative 1 half Negative one half, right? Partial x with respect to u. Now let's do partial x with respect to v. And this would be one half. Okay. <laughs> now let's do the y's. Partial y with respect to u, that's one half. Partial y with respect to v, that's one half. Okay. Now let's calculate this. This is going to be negative one fourth minus one fourth. That's negative one-half. Now remember, we're going to use the absolute value of it. So, so let's see what our integral looks like now. We have e to the u over v, and then we're going to have a one-half in here. And then I'm going to integrate, I'm going to do the du dv. But, but let's, let's see which one we want to do first. Now remember, so if... Let's think about, um, it looks like maybe we'll want to, in a, well, look at this, look at this region here, okay? Now, let's suppose that we pick values for V. For any given value for V, what does X do? Well, X goes from here to here, right? For any value for V, okay? So there's a straight shot there. So maybe it, it, it'd be reasonable to integrate with respect to u first. And then v last. Now v is going to go from uh, negative, well, v is going to go from um, 1 to 2. Okay, so v is going to go from 1 to 2. And let's think about what, what x does. X is going to go from this line, this line over here, to this line over here. So let's see if we can figure out what that is. Well, that just, that just requires us to, you know, 
figure out that this is u, well, u equals v, and this is u equals negative v, right? So this is going to go from negative v to v. Yeah, and that's going to be our integration. So, so it's a fairly easy process from here. We've got one half. We're going from one to two, from negative v to v, e to the u over v, du dv. Okay, and let's, let's just go ahead and wrap it up then. All that's left now is just the, the integration. So look, we've got the integral from one to two. Now let's see here, we're integrating with respect to u. So this was going to be v e to the u over v going from negative v to v, dv. Now make sure you understand how I got that because, you know, we're, we're just treating, we're integrating with respect to u. So we're dividing by the derivative of u over v, which we're dividing, dividing by 1 over v, which multiplies by v. Anyway, okay, so there's what we get. Now let's see what this is going to be. This is going to be 1 to 2. We've got negative v e to the u. Whoops. Almost forgot to substitute that. Actually, yeah. Let's see here. This is going to be negative v over v minus. Oh, I put a negative. Why did I put a negative? Ah. There we go. Minus a plus v e to the negative v over v dv. Okay. Now let's see what that's going to be. Let's work that out a little bit. This is going to be v e plus v e to the negative 1 dv. Okay, like that. And actually, you know, this, this would still be negative. Sorry about that. I don't know what I was, what I was thinking there. Let's see, okay. Because I'm subtracting. Ah, never mind. Okay. Now, uh, let's see what we've got here. We've got 1 to 2. Uh, I guess I could factor out this v, and I get e minus e to the negative 1 dv. And now I'm integrating with respect to v. So, oh, don't forget the 1 half out front. Okay, don't forget that. So now I've got this. I've got one half times one half v squared e minus e to the negative one, and I'm going from one to two. Okay, let's bring it home. So this is going to be one fourth e minus e to the negative one times v squared from one to two. So this is going to be one-fourth e minus e to the negative one times four minus one. So that's going to be three-fourths <laughs> e minus e to the negative one. There, that should do it. I believe that's got it. Okay, so there it is. There's how we use the Jacobian.